You see, God wants us pure. He wants to purify us so that we can receive the abundant life of God. Now, you also remember that I said to you, around about September last year, God checked with me, started, started to share with me that we are moving into a time of judgment. God is moving with judgment. And He said He's going to start in the church. He's going to start with his children and the world will be judged as well now once again please remember there are about four or five different words for judgment in the bible and this is not a judgment to destroy you this is a judgment to bring us closer to god you know just the past week people contacted me and said to me pastor i cannot go on anymore the pressure is too much. The pressure is too much. I don't know what is going on. I never experienced in my life what I'm experiencing now. And I had to explain to them what God revealed that it is His judgment. God is busy purifying. He's busy cleaning up the bride of Christ. Cleaning us out. Because Jesus is coming back for a glorified bride. So people, this Today I want to share with you and the title of my message is The Good News of Repentance. The Good News of Repentance. And our scripture reading will be out of Luke 24 verse 45 to 47. Luke 24 verse 45 to 47 and I'm going to read out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Verse 45. Now let me just before I read this just give you the scenario here. This is now after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He appeared to his disciples while they were together. And this is now what he said to them after the resurrection, before he went to heaven. All right, so Luke 24 verse 45. And he, that is Jesus, opened them understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then, after they opened their understanding, then he said to them, Thus is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Our text verse, verse 47, but I want to read our text verse to you out of the Passion Translation. Now you must go into all the nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that they will turn to me. Start right here in Jerusalem. You see, we need to be sanctified. It is time for us to be purified. Jesus is coming back for a glorified bride, a glorified church, a church that is ready as a bride. So when we experience the conviction of the Holy Spirit, the chastisement, and the judgments of God in our lives, we must respond. 
It is time to repent. It is time to be holy. The Word of God tells us in 1 Peter 1 to 16. 1 Peter 1 to 16. Be holy, for I am holy. This is what God said. Be holy, for I am holy. God wants us to be holy. You see, there are some simple questions that we need to ask ourselves as born again believers, especially in the light of the demands found in the New Testament for being holy, along with its warnings. Please, quickly, just look at me. People, what I'm sharing with you this morning, listen to me. Please listen to me. What I'm sharing with you this morning is one of the most important aspects and principles for us as born again New Testament believers in order to enter heaven. Let me say this again. What I'm sharing with you this morning is one of the, maybe the most important thing for us as New Testament believers in order to be part of the bride of Christ that will be raptured. You understand? This is a very important message that I'm sharing with you today. Please, open up your spirit and receive and it will change your life. So we need to ask ourselves as New Testament believers, you know, regarding the demands to be holy, along with its warnings, some simple questions, you know, to, to determine where we are and whether we are doing what God tells us to do, you know. So, uh, we read, for instance, we read in Romans 10, 7, 17, that faith is formed in your heart, your spirit, because of the word of God that you hear, isn't it? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that is how faith comes into your spirit. So I want to ask you, here's one of these simple questions. Are you living a life of faith? You know, I want you to, 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 to realize what this question really asks for me. Just look at your neighbor quickly before we continue. That you greet your neighbor. Say hello. hello. Ask him or her, how are you? Alright, tell your neighbor, or ask your neighbor, are you living by faith? Living by faith. Uh -huh. Alright, so, um, now that the question is asked, let's see. Let us see. So, we read in James 2, the 17, and he tells us that faith without words for corresponding action means nothing, isn't it? So, faith without a changed life. Let me say this again because this is the answer to the question. Are you living a life of faith? Faith without a changed life is dead. Faith without works is dead. Faith without living works, a changed life, is dead. How is your life? Is it a changed life? Or are you living the same way that you lived before? Are you really living a changed life? Faith without works is dead. Faith without a changed life is dead. You know, that was when I really realized that. You know, I know the scripture, it's part of me. But when God opened it up to me, it was an eye opener. Faith without a changed life is dead. So, are you living a changed life? Are you a people or a God pleaser? The next question. Ask your neighbor, ask him or her, are you a people or a God pleaser? Let's see, 
Let's answer the question. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that we can only please God by faith. We can only please God by faith. Are you living a changed life? Are you living a changed life? Are you in the process of becoming holy? Let me ask you the next simple question. Do you really love God? Ask your neighbor. Do you really love God? Let us see. Jesus said in John 14 verse 15, If you love me, obey my will. If you love me, obey my will. In your everyday life, your lifestyle, are you obeying the will of God? Do you really love God? So, we also read in Matthew 7, verse 22 to 23, that many will say to Jesus at the last day, Lord, we did a little, lot of good works in your name. And Jesus will answer, I never knew you because you didn't do what I said. The next simple question, are you ready? And that is out of Romans 6 verse 2, and I'm going to ask you to get out of that scripture directly. Romans 6 verse 2. How can you still continue in your sins if you have died with Christ? How can you still continue with your sins if you have died in Christ? You know when you are baptized, what, is the, what does baptism mean? It simply means that you are buried with Christ, you associate with Christ. You are buried the old man with Christ. And when you come out of the water, it is like the resurrected Christ with a new life, with a rope of righteousness. So now that you are born again, now that you are a born again believer, how can you still continue in your sins if you have died with Christ? How can you? So this brings me to the question what it really means to repent and how important it really is in the process of becoming holy. The importance of repentance cannot be overstated people. You know there's something that the devil wants us to miss and that is that repentance, or let me rather put it this way, the gospel cannot be preached without repentance because repentance is part of the gospel. Repentance is part of the gospel. And that is why the start of this message is the good news of repentance. What pull is it that we need? The gospel. The gospel is the good news, isn't it? So now today I want to show you the good news of repentance. And that is something I believe that the devil for a very long time tried to hide from born again believers and from the church. That repentance is part of the gospel. There's no gospel without repentance. Let me put it that Did you realize that or do you realize that? I'm sharing with you something deep today. I'm sharing with you something of the utmost importance today. I'm sharing with you something today that will determine whether you and I will reach heaven or not. It's a matter of life and death. And I'm not talking about dying here on earth, I'm talking about eternal life or eternal death. The importance of repentance cannot be overstated. John the Baptist urged everyone in Matthew 3 verse 1 to, to, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. That is what John the Baptist said. The first public church 
church of Jesus Christ, when he started with his ministry in Mark 1 verse 15, was to repent. The first public charge of Jesus was to repent. So if it is so important to Jesus, we should definitely pay attention to repentance, isn't it? So we see in our scripture reading that repentance is so important that when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection and before he departed to heaven, he gave them once again the command to preach repentance to all nations. So that is what we should do today as well. Repentance is part of the gospel. It is good news. And we read in our text verse, the 24 verse 47, and I'm going to read it once again out of that Passion Translation. Listen carefully. Now you must go into all the nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that they will turn and that is very important to it to me that they will turn to me start right here in the region of Jerusalem just look at your neighbor once again and tell him or her turn to God tell him or her repent and turn to God right I want you to understand these principles to repent as a command from God. It is not optional for a born again believer. It's not optional. And to preach repentance as we preach the gospel is not optional. Jesus commanded us to do so. And we have no excuse not to obey this command anymore. We read in Acts 17 verse 13. And once again, I'm going to read this out of the Passion Translation, so just look at me and listen. In the past, God tolerated our ignorance of these things. But now, the time of this deception has passed away. He commands us all to repent and turn to God. People, it is time of judgment. This is part of judgment. That is why we read here, in the past God tolerated our ignorance of these things, but now the time of deception has passed away. He commands us all to repent and to turn to God. So can you see how important it is to turn to God? If you don't turn to God, you will keep on, on your old ways. Jesus tells us in Mark 1 verse 15 to repent of our sins. And we need to realize that sin is not only what we do. Listen carefully. It's something that you need to understand. Sin is not only what we do. It is not only the action. It has to do much more with what motivates us to sin. It has to do with where sin comes from. So what is motivating this action of sin in your life and my life? Sin is the symptom of something situated much deeper within a person. And people, that is why the school of wholeness that we are going to start with is so important. Because with the school of wholeness it will help you. It will help you and it will change you from the inside out, the Word of God. And the working of the Holy Spirit. Because all of us in life got hurt. We're disappointed. And all this kind of stuff. And this hurt that we are walking around with, you know, when it develops, it becomes rejection. It becomes unforgiveness, anger, 
all this kind of stuff. And then out of this, what happens in our heart, we start to sin. We start to do things, you know, to get rid of the hurt and all this kind of stuff. And it just makes it more and more worse. So that is where sin comes from. It is the symptom of something situated much deeper within a person. Sin is what you see, hear, or experience in life, in the life of a person, due to the condition of that person's heart. A good example of this we find in Matthew 12, verse 34, where we see a person's mouth speaks out of what is in the heart of that person. So sin is a condition of the heart that opposes God and His Word in preference of anything else that the will of God, than the will of God. Sin is an expression of that preference in our mind, our attitude and our behavior. When we have a revelation of this, we will also understand that repentance is much more and much deeper than only confession. You see, the sin condition of the heart must change. Otherwise, you will not stop sinning. And that is the biggest problem of all of us. We try in our own power to stop, to sin. And we, we concentrate so much on the problem. And the problem, the more we focus on the problem, the, the more we look at the problem, the bigger the problem becomes. You see, it's time for us to take our focus off the problem and to focus on Jesus Christ. So that he can help us. So repentance is much more and much deeper than only confession. You see, the sin condition of the heart must change. Then it is part of the process of becoming holy. You cannot repent out of condemnation. That is what most of us do. When the devil condemns us, then we repent, we think we repent, we confess. Just to do the same thing again, the same day maybe. So let me give you a simple example. So let's say for instance that I have a drinking problem. Let me take a simple example. And you know, and I really feel bad for what I said to my wife and what I did when I was under the influence. And I am a child of God. And now I feel so bad and the devil condemns me and tells me, oh, you're a child of God, but just see what you do. Now I confess. But straight after that I feel so bad and I'm so condemned that I take the next bottle. I haven't got the strength and the power to overcome this problem and this sin. You cannot repent out of condemnation. You cannot actually really repent out of your own power and strength. Then it is out of a feeling of guilt and it is an exercise of the flesh. And that is what most of us do most of the time. And that is why we cannot become overcomers in Christ Jesus. Because we are doing it in the flesh. You see, God does not condemn. It is the work of the devil. And that is what, uh, when we do it in and out of our own strength, as I said. So, let's just for a moment just look at the real meaning of repentance. The real meaning of repentance. And just on that point, let me just say that I think there's two kinds of repentance, the flesh 
or the, the stonies or the flesh bearing peters that I just spoke about. And then there's the, let's call it the God ordained repentance. So let's look at repentance. You know, to help you understand it better, in the Old Testament, there are two words, Hebrew words, that will help us to understand repentance better. So the first word is not come, not come. And that is word H5162, which means to be sorry and to turn around or to change your mind. The second word is word H5414. It is northern, northern, which means to submit, trade, turn and yield. That is in the Hebrew, two words. It is translated, translated by such words as turn, return, seek or restore. Can you see the word restore there? You see, you often see in phrases like to turn to the Lord with all your heart. You see that word turn there is that is in the Hebrew. The Greek word for repentance is word G3341 metanoia. The Greek word 3341 metanoia, which is the noun repentance. The most common meaning given to this word is a change of mind or to turn around. This word means literally a change of mind about something. A change of mind about something. It refers to the change of one's perception. The verb repent is the Greek word G3340, metanil, metanoil, sorry. It has to do first of all with a change of mind or feelings resulting from after knowledge. So it means that you gain some knowledge and after that knowledge you change your mind and your feelings or your mind and feelings are changed. You understand? It was also used as a military term describing a soldier marching in one direction and doing an about face 100 degree turn around and go the opposite direction. And when it's used in a spiritual sense, it means to change your mind, heart, attitude and lifestyle. Can you understand why the Holy Spirit said to me last year, at the end of last year, that nothing will change. We will still suffer and go through difficulties and we will not live the abundant life if we don't change our mentality. Change your mentality, your mindset, your outlook on life. As a man thinker, so easy. We must have the mind of Christ. And you see how much it's got, it's got to do with repentance. So repentance is not just saying, listen, I'm sorry and really mean it, out of your, your soul. You see, our mind and emotions and will are saturated on what level? Bible school students? So, it's saturated on soul level. So our emotions or feelings are influenced by our mind because our mind is on so level. New knowledge that we gain happens in our mind. We get new knowledge. So our emotions will respond to that new knowledge. You understand? So the knowledge in your mind will cause your emotions, your feelings to respond in a certain way, isn't it? Let me give you a simple example. When you receive new knowledge regarding a loved one who passed away, you will experience the emotion of sorrow. You didn't experience it a minute ago, 
But in the meantime, somebody phoned you and said to you, your loved one passed away, new knowledge, and now you have the feeling, the emotion of sorrow. You understand? That is how God created us. In our scripture reading today, we see that Jesus gave his disciples, when he appeared to them after his, his uh, resurrection, before he went to heaven, he gave his disciples revelation knowledge. Now that is new knowledge. He gave them a new understanding. It was a supernatural revealing of knowledge that became new to them. You understand? We read in our, in our scripture reading in Luke 24 verse 45. Then he opened their minds to help them understand the scriptures. He opened their minds to help them understand the scriptures. New knowledge, new revelation. You understand? And that is what I ask God today. That He will open our minds and that He will give us a new supernatural understanding of real dependence because that is what we need right now more than anything else. That He will give us a new revelation knowledge of real and deep repentance today. The Word of God is always our standard as born again believers. The Holy Spirit will convict us if something is not in line with the Word of God in our life. And please, when the Holy Spirit convicts you, don't harden your heart, please. We read in John 16 verse 8, and when He, that is the Holy Spirit, has come, He will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. You see, the Holy Spirit convicts. Out of your relationship with God, you will experience, listen, there's something that needs to be rectified in my life. God chastised and judged us because He loves us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. And that is when we receive new revelation, knowledge regarding the condition of sin in our hearts. Then He opens our minds and gives us a new understanding, revelation, knowledge. Then He convicts us. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is accompanied with a strong feeling and emotion of deep sorrow and pity. You see, when the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin or something that is not right in your life, and you open up and you receive it, the Holy Spirit convicts a deep feeling of sorrow and pity within your heart. And that is when we make a commitment to turn away from sin towards God and to think, feel, and act differently. You see, that is when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome. That is what it means, what Jesus said. When Jesus said, you free, you are free indeed. Dependence of our sin when we are convicted by the Holy Spirit. Because of our relationship with God, driven by His love and His faith that is within us, is very deep and very powerful. Then and only then is real, deep repentance produced in your heart by God and by the Holy Spirit. Can you see the difference, people? So let us see what the Word of God says about this. I, I explain this now to you. Let me show it to you out of the Word of God. Because there's one thing that God cannot do. He cannot lie. 
So let me show you the truth in the Word of God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7, verse 8 to 10. And I'm going to read to you out of the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 8 to 10. Listen. For even though, and this is now Paul writing to the people in Corinth. Alright, so Paul said, For even though I did grieve you with my letter, I do not regret it now. Though I did regret it, for I see that the letter hurt you, though only for a little while. Verse 9. Yet I'm glad now because you were hurt and made sorry. Hurt and made sorry by whom? The Holy Spirit. Conviction. But because your sorrow led to repentance and you turned back to God. Do you see the word turn? And you turn back to God. So it means that we've got a choice. Don't harden your heart. And you turn back to God. For you felt a grief such as God meant you to feel. Can you see? So that you might not suffer loss in anything on our account. Now listen to verse 10. For godly sorrow that is in accord with the will of God produces repentance without regret. Leading to salvation. Wow. But worldly sorrow, listen to this, but worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe produces death. And you see the difference between the two. People, I'm sharing with you something that is of the utmost, utmost importance. And maybe you never saw this ever in your life up to this point. But let it really change you from the inside out and prepare you and me to become and to be the glorified bride of Christ. And to overcome sin and weaknesses and all kinds of things in your life. That is my prayer. We see in verse 8 that the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians that caused sorrow and grief. And then Paul uses the word repentance, which is the Greek word metanoia, in its correct sense. Paul says in this thing that godly sorrow produces a repentance that gives the result of salvation and life. People, repentance is part of the gospel. If it is not preached, it is not the gospel. We can see clearly here that real and deep repentance is something that God gives. We also see in this thing that Paul talks about a repentance, which really indicates to us that there are more than one kind of repentance. So first, there is a false repentance that does not result in anything. And when we repent, we think, we, we think by ourselves, I repented. No, you did not. It, it does not result in anything. Then second, there is a real repentance that is obvious to everyone. We have more proof of this in the Bible. Let me give you one verse. Matthew 3 verse 8 in the Amplified. So produce fruit that is consistent with repentance. Demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. Wow. So produce fruit that is consistent with repentance, the real repentance, the God kind of repentance. Then you will have a new behavior, a new lifestyle, which is proof of the change that took place in your heart, which is proof that in the power of God you overcame the condition of sin and you are becoming holy and that you are obeying the will of God when He says, Be holy, for I am holy. Then you are working 
towards glorification for Jesus is coming for a glorified bride. Then the word, the prophetic word from 2023 will, will kick in in your life. 2023 will be a year and a time of purification. This is part of purification into abundant life. Isn't that awesome? So, repentance is turning from our sinful ways towards God and His will in and through the power of God. So we see that the three steps found in repentance that we talked about this morning are, first of all, new revelation knowledge and understanding by conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, ask God. Ask God. You've got a relationship with Him. You're a child of God. Ask Him to reveal to you what needs to be changed in your life through your relationship with Him so that you can enter into real repentance. New revelation knowledge and understanding. Secondly, the experiencing of deep, godly, sorrow and pity. You know, when I stood in my living room in September and I was busy praising and worshipping God and the Holy Spirit said to me, it's a time of judgment, I started to cry. Something just happened within me. And I cannot tell you what I experienced. I felt as if, you know, please, just, you know, I just want to disappear. I cannot stand in the presence of this holy God. And I, I just, I just cried out to God, you know, mercy, have mercy on me and my family and our church and our partners and everybody connected to us. That's all that I could do. And then I realized, and I had this deep repentance, and I realized that we are serving a holy, almighty God. And immediately after that, you know, God just involved me in His love in a wonderful way. And He said to me, you know what? I love you. This judgment is not to destroy you. It is to save you. Thirdly, a decision to turn towards God. A change of mind, heart, attitude and lifestyle. Repenting perfectly describes what happens when you make a spiritual turnaround in and through the love, faith and power of God which changes everything to please God. Now we understand that repentance is a gift from God. Listen, it is not something that you can really do out of your own power. It is a gift from God. And I want to read and you know, it's once again in the Passion Translation, but listen to this. Second Timothy 2 verse 25 in the Passion Translation says, Then with meekness you'll be able to carefully enlighten those who argue with you, so they can see God's gracious gift of repentance and be brought to the truth. The revelation knowledge, the understanding. Gift. Of repentance. You see, it's time for purification and sanctification. It is time to be holy or to become holy. It is time for abundant life. Jesus is coming back for a glorified bride. And let me tell you, when we repent, we will experience and see revival in this world. So Africa is going to be changed. Let me tell you, God is busy. God is busy. God is busy. All the countries in the world's eyes will be fixed on South Africa because God is busy working in the hearts of His church in South Africa. And we need to repent. Let me share and let me close with the scripture. Acts 3 verse 19. So repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins and return to God. Seek His purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away. 
blot it out completely erase it so that listen to this so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord destroying you like a cool wind on a hot day listen people who of you needs refreshing i do repent it's time for purification and transformation in your planet I just wanted to share this with you today. To me, it's so special. It's so important. And you know, God really revealed this in my mind and my spirit. And I want you to have this.